where are you tanya just now uh, ma'am i'm in kolkata west bengal okay okay and how are you in kolkata you belong to up don't you kanpur uh, ma'am my father is serving in bsf so he was posted here so i came with him oh, right now you are there but you have you spent any time in up uh, yes ma'am uh, i have completed my 10th and 12th from up itself and my graduation That's my right. graduation and your uh, choice of state is also up right yes ma'am okay very good tanya and when is your interview uh, ma'am my name is not in the first list okay okay so you have time hmm? yes ma'am it's a good time to come right now we can be very frank with you on the feedback so that you can improve further should anything be required hmm? yes ma'am okay. oh you play chess huh oh. yes ma'am so who is your uh, idol in chess Uh, ma'am recently the game of r vishali and gukesh has been very impressive so mm -hmm. i was watching their games so who's your idol right. you have some idol in, in this chess player this is where i want to go uh, ma'am i like the way gukesh plays d gukesh and uh, i have tried to analyze how he plays so very nice okay channel. tell me what is the king's gambit and who plays it who's the master of king's gambit today of the latest people recent players uh ma'am king is gang uh, king's gambit means uh, when the pawn in front of the king is open uh, so that is that was the opening position but i'm not aware who recently who is, is it the like, player is what is the most common gambit that is used the safest gambit in chess uh, ma'am queen's gambit absolutely king's is very risky yeah? okay yes ma'am magnus carlsen Okay. Okay. Now, uh, recently there's a lot of move about attracting investment into UP. Huh? Uh, yes, the season has gone. He went abroad also. I think all over the place. Lots of investment is supposed to come in. So, can you tell me something about that? What is the size of the invest investment? Where is it coming in UP? And what are the key sectors it's coming? Uh, Ma'am, uh, the investment in UP has uh, risen over the years. uh recently the investor summit was also there the primary focus has been on noida sector uh, where in the investor summit also the maximum investment came but the purvanchal area has been the second highest in case of investment uh, talking about the surprise the packet of this investment dot that has come what is the surprise packet among the surprise is that uh, instead of the i don't know which sector, region was the surprise one which we thought would be the last noida was no surprise Poor yes, Anchal, no surprise because though it's bad, but the CM is from there. Which was the surprise area that was there? Okay, uh, mind, I would that. have to read about. Okay. It. So, what was the size of investment that has been promised? Uh, Ma'am, uh, around nineteen thousand MOUs have been signed, and uh, trillions of investment has been promised. Trillions. But... What is the figure? You know. Ma'am, I have to read about it. Sorry. Okay, all right. Never mind. You can read up. Now, Noida. What do you think is the most significant investment that is taking place in Noida, or a project that is coming in Noida? Most significant. Ma'am, IT uh, sector is the one of the focus. Um, of a project that is coming up in, shall I say, GB Nagar, or shall I say, in this region? Uh, Ma'am, what is the infrastructure project? Uh, Ma'am, if are you talking about data centers? Uh, I'm talking been... about Jawar International Airport. Okay, yes, ma'am. <laughs> That should strike you. All right. Okay, and you have uh, you read the papers? Yes, ma'am. Today there is a, a the lead story in the papers is the Supreme Court verdict on in the Bilki Swanu case. Hmm? Yes. As a woman, what do you think of this judgment? And do you think? Uh, and what do you think more needs to be done in this matter? Ma'am, I believe it was a very progressive judgment. the uh, remission judgment ma'am the remission of uh, the convicts was called into question already by the cbi also had said that uh, uh, the people who were released should not have been released in its previous reports and uh, therefore a progressive judgment would have been they'd gone progress further and said go put them to death <laughs> they set but, aside something that was blatantly wrong right but what was the the ground they took for that what was the legal ground they took Ma'am, the legal ground was that uh, the state Gujarat uh, granted remission, but it should have been Maharashtra because that was the place where the convicts were held. Absolutely. 
So now tomorrow, if the Maharashtra government decides to get remission, where is the progressiveness of the judgment? It was just correcting a legal lacuna, I would say. Ma'am, the Supreme Court has uh, clearly and in very strong words talked about how uh, it was wrong to release us. Oh, have people. they said that? Have they said that Maharashtra cannot give remission? No, ma'am, they have not. But I believe there would be a moral, uh, a moral onus on the uh, Maharashtra government, a kind of pressure. Do you know the? Do you know the rules? What 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 will be the legal uh, beacon, so to speak, for Maharashtra on which base they will proceed? Ma'am, I have to read about it. Sorry. Okay. All right. Okay, we'll come, since we're on women issues, we can uh, talk a little about uh, uh, what do you think is the most important law or scheme which has been framed either by the UP government or the government of India for women of UP, say women of Kanpur, if you're familiar, which, which city in, in UP are you familiar with? Uh, Ma'am, I, uh, I have been in Kanpur. So... Okay, Kanpur, let's make it Kanpur. Which scheme or law would you think is the most important from the point of women of Kanpur? One, you have to choose. And why? Uh, Ma'am, law or scheme? Anything. Ma'am, I believe that Ujwala scheme has been uh, very successful because it touches those people who... Okay, very good. very good. I'll give you a case study on the same area. Now, supposing you've been promoted to DM of Lucknow. What would be your two topmost priorities? Ma'am, first would be uh, to ensure the education uh, of the children uh, because there are high dropout rates. Uh, what is in... the literacy rate of Lucknow? Ma'am, I'm sorry, I have to read about Never mind. It. What else? Uh, Ma'am, other than that, uh, my focus would be on the safety and security of women. Oh, very good. Um, last question. Environment, what did you like? What would you like? Would you like it environment or would you like me to ask you something on in international affairs? What would you prefer? Um, anything uh, that you say. Uh, no preference as such. Okay, okay. So tell me, there's a new government in Argentina. What do you think of Javier Milei? What do you think of him? Mom, he's a, a far-right uh, leader. And uh, he what has... What is the technical term used for him? Mom, I'm sorry. I have to... Never mind, never mind. So what are his policies? He is associated with one particular thing. What is that? Ma'am, he is uh, talking about uh, anti-immigration. So, so mm -hmm. anti-immigration. He is against the idea of immigration. Immigration into? In the country. Uh, the coming of immigrants in the country. Mm -hmm. Anything else? The most important, what he's, his, his economic philosophy, there's something. Yes, ma'am. He has talked about moving towards US dollar. Dollarization, of course, the most important first. Okay, yes, thank you. Um, we'll give feedback later on. I think that works better. Navneet, please go ahead. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning. You come from UP. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, in the past one or two years, or more than that, UP has been in news for what is called bulldozer justice, or you know, encounters to control law and order. What do you know about these two things and what are your personal views on those issues? Sir, I believe that uh, illegal encroachment needs to be uh, removed from the area. But uh, if it is done in a legal manner, then uh, it is okay. But if the rules are not followed, uh, then that is a cause of concern. In case of Uttar Pradesh, uh, the illegal encroachments have been removed following the rules. Uh, so I believe that uh, it is... Uh, a right step. No, but what uh, they have removed illegal encroachments of certain people. Do you mean to say that there are no Ill other illegal encroachments in UP? Uh, no, sir. So certainly the idea that selection of a few people uh, is a matter of concern. For that, I believe there should be more transparency in how these uh, things are selected and uh, encroachments are made. Uh, so I believe a, a framework can be drafted or an improvement can be made in that, in more transparency. If you are a DM of a district in UP and you are told by the powers that be that please go and demolish or remove the encroachment of X and Y, 
will you do that so if it is an illegal encroachment and i have a solid proof for that then i would do can you pick and choose that you will do only for x and y and not others sir in that case if i have solid proof over the areas in which i find that illegal encroachments are then i would take action you will take action against those two people or against uh, everyone sir uh, everyone if it is possible uh, wherever i have the proof that such illegal encroachments are made you want about encounters so in case of uh, encounters also under ipc and crpc a person has the right of self defense including the police officers so uh, the encounters can be justified in that manner but if the rule of law is not followed uh, then uh, it becomes a cause of uh, question uh, in case of uttar pradesh also uh, i believe that committees can be made in order to ensure uh, we also have supreme court guidelines for that so i think they should be followed in order to ensure that uh, they do not happen in a wrong manner what is your opinion the number of encounters uh, large number of encounters have taken place in uttar pradesh do you think in all the encounters it was police firing in self defense or it was something else uh, sir as per the reports it was uh, self defense but uh, there are certain issues which are under uh, investigation so i cannot comment on that okay there is a talk about simultaneous elections in india what do you understand by that number 1 number 2 is simultaneous elections are possible in the given constitution scheme the two question i am asking that is what do you understand from simultaneous election and whether these can be held under the present constitution so till the year 1967 we did have simultaneous elections in the country but after uh, when the government uh, there was uh, the government prematurely they got dismissed so the simultaneous elections uh, ended in a manner uh, a law commission and election commission of india has also even the niti aayog has recommended the constitutional simultaneous election so uh, i believe we would have to make amendments into certain articles of the constitution in order to have simultaneous elections because uh, in case a state assembly gets uh, uh, dismissed prematurely then president rule would need to be imposed but we have a limit on that so i think a constitutional amendment has to be made for that okay, but what do you understand by simultaneous election what are these Uh, so it means that uh, the people simultaneously elect for uh, both the national the state as well as the local governments okay you know <clears throat> india canada relationship has been under a cloud for some time what are the reasons for that uh, so recently uh, it was the issue of uh, uh, the prime minister of canada making allegations that uh, uh, that india was involved in the killing of a khalistani separatist in that country so because of that uh, the uh, diplomacy suffered a bit other than that also it has been seen that canada interferes in the internal matters of india in the case of farmer agitation also uh, the comments were made by the prime minister uh and on the other front it has been seen that the uh, c cpa that we have or the trade balances that we have with uh, uh, canada are not very much that is uh, on trade front also we are not dealing uh, very much so there has been an overall strain okay thank you tanya thank you sir uh tanya good morning good morning sir you must have observed that there is lot of violence in uh... kolkata and other parts of west bengal more so during election but otherwise also in general what is your assessment why is it so there so there are many uh, reasons for that firstly i would say because uh, kolkata or west bengal had a left government 
so uh, cipm was in power because of that political violence uh, was a norm which was used by the political parties second uh, the resources are very scarce in the region and uh, industry has not been able to take a lift in the region because of that uh, the sensitivities of the people are uh, quite easily being aroused for uh, uh, such means and uh, thirdly i believe it is the law and order that needs to be strengthened and because of the lack of which we see such incidents if that is the so if there is failure of maintenance of law and order on the part of the state law and order enforcement machinery then uh, is it not a fit case for imposition of president's rule as uh, say india uh, does not believe in the idea that we impose president rule on a Uh, state we believe in the idea of federalism uh, we uh, therefore and there are certain guidelines according to sr bombay case on imposition of president rule in a region uh, i believe uh, we can modernize the police forces train them better and uh, equip them better uh, also at at times we can uh, have the capf coming into the region in order to serve uh, so improvements can be made okay you uh, you come from kanpur right yes. kanpur was known as the what was it known as in so industrial the, so the manchester of the east yes what has happened to that uh, manchester of the east over with the last 3 4 decades so uh, the manchester of the east idea was because of the textile industry in kanpur the leather and also the cotton mill uh, that was there but because of the uh, the uh, the trade uh, unions that were very strong in the region the lack of modernization of the textile mills uh, this industry has declined the industry uh, did not uh, stay in the region and because of that but uh, recent government has uh, introduced the one district one product scheme under which uh, leather industry has been giving a promotion so steps are now being made uh you spoke about textile and you okay. spoke about lack of modernization as a reason for downfall of manchester of the east you know in textile industry the scope of uh, modernization has been very limited automatic cone winding was first second was uh, hosiery third was uh, synthetic uh, fabric so in your assessment was that the reason or there was something else also because the same trade unions must have existed uh, so there was a committee which uh, because there was a decline in the industrial output so a committee was being made uh, i'm forgetting the name of it so it recommended a voluntary uh, retirement for uh, the workers and uh, because there was a lack of livelihood the workers they agitated and uh, then the industry it fled okay what is your assessment about uh, israel hamas uh, conflict what is your assessment why did it happen what is going to be its outcome uh, so the actions that hamas did um, on uh, palis hamas did on the state of israel uh, they cannot be justified and uh, because of that uh, Uh, a retaliation was made by israel on uh, hamas by declaring an all out uh, uh, war uh, i believe in the idea that dialogue and diplomacy can only be the solution ahead because a lot number of people are dying in the region and that can also not be justified so does it qualify to come in the definition of war uh, so i have to read about it i use that word i have to read about it because so far the war term has not been used it is always said it is israel hamas conflict yes sir sorry okay. sir i i yeah yeah but read it and try to know about it my last question what, what was your optional sir sociology sociology okay tell me four sociological attributes which uh, govern the institution of health behavior So can i you take a minute about health behavior right uh so not specifically but i will make a guess okay make it 
Uh, sir, for one, I believe that uh, patriarchy plays a role in health relations because uh, the National Family Health Survey also says that women have a little say when it comes to uh, the health aspects, be it in contraceptives or other things. Uh, second, I think that the rural urban divide is also there. The rural areas lack the health facilities. Third is the tradition. Often the stereotypes are present in the society because of which uh, we have vaccine hesitancy as it was seen in the case of COVID. And uh, lastly, I think the traditional knowledge that the tribal people have, uh, it also becomes a form of uh, uh, health. So other than that, I have to read. Okay. Final question from me. There is a lot of discussion on, on a simultaneous election. Does this term exist as on now in the election laws or in the constitution of India? Uh, sir, in the constitution, I do not believe it exists because we would have to make amendments in order to ensure that simultaneous election happens. But I have to read on it. Okay, read about it. Okay, Because you made a statement that till 67 we had simultaneous elections. Yes, you sir. can't you can't affirm that we had simultaneous election because there is no concept of simultaneous elections, right? Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Varun. Thank okay, you. Tanya, uh, you may you play chess, right? Yes, sir. Okay, relate decision making as an administrator to chess. Uh, sir, in chess we have to uh, think of the move that the other person is going to make. Also, for every action that we take, we have to look at all the aspects of it, uh, of all the possible direction in which uh, our vulnerability can be uh, present. So for an administrator also, making a policy, they have to think all the aspects in which a vulnerability can creep in. And uh, other than that, they also have to think what all opposition that can come to a particular policy that they are making. Okay, right. Uh, you like to play the King's Gambit, right? So I play the Queen's Gambit. Okay, okay, you like uh -huh. the Queen's, Queen's Gambit. Queen's, 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 Which one Queen's, you like more? Queen's the Queen's Gambit because it is okay. safe. Okay, and uh, you know th there's something known as London system, right? Uh, what is that? So can you repeat the I London didn't... system? So I have to read on it. Okay, right. Uh, you know, in chess, uh, you know, obviously, uh, how many grandmasters do we have? So we have 84 grandmaster, of which four are female. Okay, right. And uh, name the four? Sir, uh, Harike Dronavali, hmm. R. Vishali, Koneru, hum uh, Koneru Hampi, and uh, so I'm forgetting one, sorry. Forgetting one. Are there three or are there four? Sir, I have to check, sorry. Okay. Right. Uh, R. Vishali is the sister of? R. Pragananda. Right. Uh, do you think there's an advantage in having a brother play chess? So my brother also plays chess. So I can say that there is an advantage to it. Okay. Right. Uh, it seems there was a cheating scandal, right? Uh, you know, chess has gone online and there have been uh, various uh, you know, uh, insinuations online, you know, on Twitter, Magnus Carlsen, everyone. So can you shed some light on that? So it was uh, the conflict that sparked be uh, between a match between Magnus Carlsen and uh, Hans Nyman. Mm -hmm. uh, it was being claimed that uh, Hans Nyman had cheated, so Magnus Carlsen quit in between. Hans mm -hmm. Nyman himself has said that in online games he has cheated over a dozen times, but mm -hmm. he uh, said that in person he has not cheated. But mm -hmm. uh, then the conflict, uh, uh, it became big and then there were uh, uh, certain organizations involved. But uh, it is an, uh, there was another case where Vladimir Kramnik talked about it. Have you? Uh, do you remember that one? Uh, sorry, sir. I have to read on it. Right. Uh, very recently, right? This happened. Um, any idea? No, sir. So I have to read. Okay. Right. Uh, relate. Uh, you know, sociology and chess. Uh, so it can be uh, like in. Chess, we have the pawns, which are the first sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Then it is the king, which is the most important. And mm -hmm. uh, in sociology, we see the term of patriarchy, where the male is the most important, and there is an inequality in the system. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. where uh, some people's lives are not as uh, i can say important as relate a uh, relation to others that mm-hmm. is also in chess that the pawns are not as useful as the and the entire game is concentrated on the king okay but the queen is perhaps the most powerful piece right so it has been only a recent phenomena uh, initially the uh, the queen was kind of like the bishop and uh, it uh, it emerged only recently okay sure uh, and uh, building on to that do you, do you think is is chess racist so uh, like fide has said that uh, chess is not racist and uh, we also had uh, in satyajit ray's movie there was a depiction that uh, the chess uh, the chess pieces were red and white in color and fide has the rule that the light color plays first so uh, i do not believe it is a racist because it was not meant in that way also in the china's game of go we can see that it is the black that plays first okay so and another piece that i wanted to ask which chess piece do you think has the longest life span the king uh, apart from king of course <laughs> yes to have <laughs> so um the pawns which pawn so so i cannot make a guess sorry uh, let's say if we have to choose between g pawn or h pawn uh so g pawn okay it's h pawn otherwise it's based okay. on data of, of half a million chess games okay nonetheless so uh, do you like uh, otherwise okay moving on uh, what do you think is more important an institution or an individual so an institution why would you say that uh so because uh, an individual can have differing opinions on certain things and in order to run a society we need an institution we need a collective will okay and has have we seen important individuals coming in and shaping institutions differently yes sir so that would be the role of a leader we had uh, certain leaders who came forward and uh, changed okay and uh, you also like to read books do you prefer reading digital copies or physical hard copies uh, sir i personally prefer digital copies because they are more accessible uh, to me and uh, also i can read them anywhere okay and and do you think in it, it in any way is promoting piracy sir it is true that it is promoting piracy because there are many uh, websites that illegally present the uh, copies of books okay. can we control that or do you think th- shall that be controlled sir indeed it needs to be controlled because uh, it attacks the revenue of a author and uh, uh, it is not uh, right uh, also the violation of the copyright law does it also lead to proliferation of knowledge sir uh, it is true but for that we also have legitimate websites that are there which provide books at an affordable cost even lesser than a physical copy okay one last question what is communism so communism is an idea which was given by karl marx in his book das kapital which means uh, that communism would be the end stage of history uh, he sees uh, history in the form of conflict between the haves and the have not and he says that conflict would end with the emergence of communism where, where there would be equality among all and a, a follow up question sorry like i asked I, i i said the last question but again uh, do you think communist parties across the world do they do they really work to bring in communism so as of now we have not had a re- true communist uh, society uh, even the most pro- prominent example that china that we have it is also leaning towards authoritarianism and it does not promote the collective will which marx had talked of okay that's it thank you thank you sir that brings to end the formal part and now for the feedback uh, so first of all tanya what, how did you think uh, the interaction with us went today mam i did not have information on a lot of things and i have to read when is your interview mam it is not in the first phase okay. so that's very good you have time um tanya i found you very good 
Um, mm. Of course, the knowledge gaps are there. That is there, which you've identified and need to work. But, uh, you know, I like the way you answered. Uh, I like the fact that you didn't get into guessing. I like the fact that you had a nice balance. Uh, not just the pros and cons approach, but also I like the moral and practical balance. Uh, your delivery is very good. Um, you are articulate. A little uh, soft sometimes, but it's I think it's very good. And uh, you have very, very good potential. How did you uh, fare in your main exam? Uh, Ma'am, my GS3 did not go that well. Otherwise, all papers were good. I hope that... Uh, have you made it to the interview before? No, ma'am. This is my first interview. Okay. And how many attempts have you done? Ma'am, this is my third. Very good. That's still early days. Um, having said that, uh, there are areas where you need to work, where there will be obvious questions. Um, first obvious question will be on UP. There will be a set of questions. Huh? There will be like, there can be the industrial investment kind of a question that I asked uh, with the regional buyer. The Bundelkhand is a surprise. One would have thought it would be the end of the table, but it was not. Okay. I mean, Noida, Western UP, of course, you knew that's the hub. That's what attracts. And Purvanchal because the CM. But Bundel Khan was a surprise. So, uh, and now some presence of mind, Jewar Airport should have struck you. It's that region. Or maybe you just look at Noida town. Uh, the implications of that, etc. Somebody can ask you, should there be an airport? And is it a political decision, etc. Um, I did ask you the Bilki Spanu case, didn't I? Yeah, so very progressive sort of. I did not think you needed to go overboard on that one. It was a judgment in the right direction, definitely. But it was actually just a technical like you know, taken out and the ball is from the Gujarat government's court to the Maharashtra government's court. Okay. Now you must know that what is the next, what are the options for the Maharashtra government? If it happens before you your interview, fine. If it doesn't happen, then you should know because that will be a live issue. There is a, they have particular rules, the government resolution which actually talks of 28 years for crimes against women and they've done only 14 years. But let us see what okay. happens. We do not know, but you prepare for that. Uh, when we are in that genre, uh, there would be women's issues, women's questions. So I asked you law or scheme. So you asked me law or scheme. I said, any. I mean, I just wanted to see where your prioritization goes. And you chose Ujwala. Uh, good, well, fair enough. But uh, now you have to see whether you do economic or you do empowerment or you do safety. And uh, then you have to relate it to Kanpur. I asked you Kanpur. There are many. I mean, the, you can talk about the, the sphere of uh, survival of girl, PCP, NDT, or you can talk this MTP. I don't think it comes in that first category. Or if you're looking at a working woman segment, then you'd look at the POSH Act or you'd look at maternity benefit and things like that. So you have to see which, which, which sector you will target. Right? So that yeah. is what, whether you see women's safety, whether you see economic, or whether you see working women, or women's survival, basically. Now, uh, DM Lucknow, I was very disappointed because uh, I thought that you would know about Lucknow, you know. Who are, and I, you did say women's safety is an afterthought, but uh, um, what about the chicken workers? They are women, they are totally downtrodden. So, one economic upliftment of downtrodden women should have been there. Yes, ma'am. Otherwise, you can say anything. You can say it's the state capital, so uh, infrastructure is wanting, or law and crime, law and order should be better, or road safety, whatever, whatever. So prepare these things. Right? Okay. You can get case studies on women. If you were this thing, what would you do in this situation, that situation? Safety of women, prepare everything. I did not ask you about environment. We didn't have time. Hmm? So you must know about the COP28. You must know 27, 26. You must know the movement over time from Kyoto to Paris to Dubai. You must know what it means globally. You must know what it means for India. Right? Because phase down from phase out is a movement, is improvement for fossil, yes, so fossil fuels. Then you must know, look at the alternative sources of energy. You must look at green hydrogen. Its limitations is positives. Huh? Uh, pollute. Uh, then you must know other forms of energy also, renewable. What are the constraints? What is what, etc., etc. And... Uh, then vehicular pollution, so EVs, et cetera, that kind of thing. Prepare on that. Environment, you will get one question for sure. You may get a lot of straying of animals into the human habitat. You may get about some environmental unfriendly project, rhythmic Nicobar or something like that. Hmm? Then uh, uh, foreign affairs, I did not ask you the most obvious one over Middle East. I asked you something a little more obscure. 
So there again, you should have thought before answering. See, if you have a if you have a question, you have to prioritize. Don't say the first thing that you blurt out, right? I mean, he is he has refused to join BRICS. Yes, he's a dollarization. He is known as that, and he is a uh, yeah, he's a capitalist, all right. And what do they call him? Libertarian. Libert so you should know uh, libertarian. What is a, 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 a what's the other word? Is it liberal? I don't liberal. Know. Liberal, okay. Liberal, between liberal, libertarian, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Those terms you should know. Then our neighborhood you should know because um, uh, three, uh, Bangladesh has had elections. Pakistan will have elections. There'll be other elections coming around. Maldives, there's a row happening just now. You must formulate a view, a balanced view on that. Huh? Not an ultra-national or sub-national view, but a, a balanced view. Then uh, I think you were asked about encounters or bulldozers or something that will, any candidate from UP is prone. Unless there are too many candidates that day, you may not get it, but you will get it. So uh, uh, furthermore, I, I spared you on this. I could have cornered you and asked you, which somebody may not be kind enough to do. They may ask you first your views on this one, uh, this um, uh, bulldozer or killings. Atik Ahmed or Dubey or Shri Prakash Shukla or Dubey is in your vicinity, Kanpur. So yes, what are your views? And obviously you are going to say extrajudicial is not condoned. And then they will say, but so what? These are a, a mafia. Then you will probably say that uh, uh, improve the judicial system or give, give citizens better protection. Incidentally, the Evidence Act Amendment talks about better protection to witnesses. So related to these things, how you can say, well, I, obviously you will say that. Then somebody may say, what about Nijjar and Pannu? So first line of defense is, of course, the Indian state says that it has not done it and there's credible evidence in that. But then if it comes down to what if they did it, would you do it? Then you distinguish in the national foreign policy and national interest. And okay. any anything in foreign policy is done after a certain level of uh, deliberation and approval. It's at high decision-making level. Whereas domestically, your encounters, etc., one, of course, uh, sorry enough, Neet, but who gives the police the right to take away anybody's life? And so today they are killing a, 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 a mafia. Tomorrow they'll kill somebody they have a land dispute with. Already there's that case of Tamil Nadu, which was in the paper three days back, four days back. Those 450 rupees subsidence farmers were held up by the uh, ED for EPMLA because they had a dispute with a powerful politician, a land dispute at a border. So you can get things like that on UP, prepare that. Um, uh, your chess ones, I think um, you need to read up a little more on that also because chess woman, you may just find an active player there, hmm? the techniques, etc. Leather, uh, you mentioned leather is the ODOP, right? So the leather industry, what happened? Tanneries closed, relocated. Now you moved up from the tanning stage to the processing, the next stage, etc. You have to know that. Then uh, I liked your presence of mind. I liked your sociology and chess, those things. Very nice. And a, a mild, pleasant personality you bring out. So the very valid question asked, I'm sure the panelists will tell about that uh, one election one. One country, one election. So you need to know that. And also you need to know about one country, one election, both sides of the picture. Right? I've given you a very extensive sort of a thing because you're a very promising candidate. But do please prepare all this. And what papers do you read? Uh, Ma'am, I read Indian Express and the Economic Times. Very good. Perfect. You read the explained? Yes, ma'am. Explained column. Have you read it today? Ma'am, not today. I was in a hurry, so not today. All right. Don't be in a hurry. You may get a morning session. You will definitely get the papers. So okay. women question, UP question, environment question. These three are trying out from your data. Please prepare. Apart from that, you will get current affairs. Okay. All the best. Navneet. Ma'am, ma one last question. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Ma'am, I was selected for assistant commanding post in CISF. Uh, at present, my training has not commenced, but I believe that it would start by the time I give the interview. So can I expect any question on that? If it comes to the bio data, they will ask. Because a woman going to CISF is not so common. And uh, you have given police service as number three in your yes, options, sir. right? So yes, there's nothing, no, nothing wrong with it. But then you should know about it. You should know about CAPFs. So CAPFs also, you can get questions like parity with the army they were asking for. There's issues on that. Then placement of CAPFs and uh, the, um, uh, uh, the what do you call it? The, the fact that they're getting beaten up everywhere and they're not so partial, impartial and... Um, prepare that. Of course, if they ask you, then they will ask you a question. Definitely. You don't have to volunteer yourself that you have um, you have uh, opted for a CAPF. They ask you, it comes, or they say, what have you done after so-and-so date? You can say that. Not an issue. There's no conflict on that point. In fact, it shows you're a courageous woman. That's good. 
then you must know more about policing and role of CAPFs, Naxal, use of CAPFs in Naxal areas and those CISF is not there. And why did you opt for CISF soft option? Why did you not do CRPF? Those kind of questions can come back. Okay, ma'am. Okay. So prepare for them. I'm sure you'll do it very well. Okay. Your father's in the BSF. Yes, ma'am. So that aspect could also be there, whatever. Okay. Navni, please go ahead. Tanya Chairperson has <clears throat> covered more or less um, a very wide spectrum and she has given you advice which you keep in mind. Uh, yes, just adding to that, uh, read newspapers very carefully. You have a lot of time before you go for the interview. And uh, I will say uh, you are reading two newspaper. You are in Calcutta. You read Hindu also. That gives you very good, uh, uh, you know, critical uh, 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 write-ups, which may be useful to you. And, uh, uh, you know, wherever controversial questions are asked, especially like I asked you in encounters or, uh, you know, bulldozer, you know, basically, uh, as a individual or as a, I mean, say tomorrow you become an officer, your approach has to be that whatever the law provides, you have to act within the ambit of the law. If law does not provide you some power, even if somebody higher up tells you, I think uh, you should be saying, I mean, uh, uh, th there should be a strict no that it cannot be done because by in a, and uh, doing encounters and bulldozer kind of justice, you may have some short-term gain, a short-term popularity, but that can lead to uh, anarchy in the society. Uh, you know, so you have to be careful. Then what is happening in Indian context, like simultaneous elections, role of governor, uh, these things are very important. There are bound to be questions on these issues. Then international arena, a lot is happening. Uh, and before you appear for the interview, a lot more will be happening. So I yes, think sir. you will have to read and keep yourself ready. And as chairperson told you, you are a good candidate. And uh, I, I wish you all the best. And you should be doing well. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Vijay, please go ahead. Uh, Tanya, I'll restrict mm -hmm. my observations on whatever I have asked. You need to read a lot about uh, the downfall of uh, Manchester of the East. Your, uh, your uh, knowledge is quite superficial and limited in that context. Please read it. Okay, sir. Same with the, the law and order in uh, Kolkata and West Bengal. Uh, you gave the answer, but it was too simplistic. Okay, which is, uh, you know, a common man's uh, thinking or so. Go into a little bit more uh, deeper. You you can't have a situation where even paramilitary forces are being attacked. So there is something seriously wrong with the uh, system. Okay, so analyze those issues and then uh, don't come out with the simplistic answers like modernization of police department or reforms. The, see, there is a human angle involved to it. There is a commitment angle involved in the whole process. The motivation angle involved in the whole process. The rule of law implementation, you know, that uh, passion uh, is involved. So just uh, read about it because these are potential things. Since your father was also in BSF, uh, uh, there is a potential question which I can suggest to you now. In the history of BSF, uh, there is a father and son duo who have been director generals. So if yes, somebody sir. knows about BSF, so th that could be a potential question. You know the answer? So the present DG is the son of a previous DG. So Not I know present the... DG. Not present DG. Okay, so just, the last just... one. Yeah, okay. the last one. Pankaj Kumar Singh and Prakash Singh. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, good, good that you know it. So this is, and simultaneous election is a very delicate and sensitive topic. The two elections having taken simultaneously till 1967 was only an incident okay. or an accident at the best. They were not conducted as simultaneous elections. Okay. Just keep that in mind before talking about uh, simultaneous election. And you are factually wrong on one thing. The simultaneous election cannot be for all three levels. 
it is only for parliament and state legislatures not local bodies which you yes, mentioned sir. Yes, sir. just Sorry. keep that in mind yeah just keep it. all the best to you uh, thank you sir yeah thank you varun right uh, you should have some idea about various chess openings the london system is very common right it is just uh, d4 you know the other side plays you know d5 you go c3 basically the uh, the bishop develops to f4 right that's the basic yeah. idea behind it right so uh, be comfortable there right and uh, obviously uh, right uh, the 84 grandmasters was correct but i think we have three right i think and uh, she's supposed to be now be made she has not been officially made so that's one we can uh, prepare uh, right and decision making in chess and you know sir's question also right uh, is chess racist obviously right uh, you know try to have a smile when talking about it Okay. okay it's like a fun question, right? It's like trying to lighten the mood. The panelist is trying to lighten the mood, right? Gauge that. Okay. Okay, sir. Right? In that sense. Okay. So uh, and uh, Tanya, like really impressive knowledge of chess. Mm -hmm. Uh you're thorough and uh, sociology application is like pretty decent. So uh, a bit time hai, I would uh, rather say keep working for current affairs. Okay, and okay, Joby is in the Korea, Uska sociological, sociological, sociological analysis. Nikal that that should that should work already. Like, you have a very good personality to make it through. I think you've already you, made it through once, and so we already ek, ek exam to UPS in a recommend Kari Dia, a Korbi Gardega. Thank you so much. Okay, is there anything you want to ask any of us, or you are all set now? So much no, of Gyan in your years, ma'am. I would implement that. Okay, all the best. Thank and so uh, do do prepare just now and i would suggest again don't do too many mocks till you got your knowledge updated a little more and prepared all this do by the end okay, of the month or something okay, okay ma'am okay. all the very best bye bye thank you thank you ma'am